Yes, the conference theme of changing lives in a changing world fits so beautifully with the, the message of uh, authentic leadership because it's really starting with ownership of your own personal change and your own uh, personal leader uh, leadership journey. And it's a changing world because it is a, what the military calls a VUCA world. It's volatile, uncertain, chaotic, ambiguous. There's a whole lot that's changing. But when we kind of get more centered on our values and on our uh, what are our motivations, what is our kind of way of operating and, and what are our support teams that uh, give us advice and uh, also uh, support us in our activities. That's kind of like the stabilizer in this VUCA world. Well look, the cultural issue is actually the largest barrier that they face at the moment and a lot of that's to do with how they've historically evolved. And so it's really about the challenge for them is creating a new narrative for the future of what the future looks like of a diverse workforce and also the type of diversity of tasks they'll be doing within that. And I think the challenge with that for people is a lot of people will have their personal and organisational identities very entwined with that. So it's, it's a painful process for some people. That's one of the challenges. And you have to change the structures of your organisation, which is also a painful process to make sure that that change stays and is embedded within those organisations. And it takes time. Uh, I, was, I was brought over to the conference this year to talk about the resilience of the London Fire Brigade uh, in 2017. Obviously, um, we encountered numerous terrorist attacks and the Grenfell Tower fire. Um, following the incidents that they attended, our staff, um, some staff did suffer with PTSD. And that may not have been caused by the particular incident, but as we're aware with PTSD, it's like a, you know, a filling, filling a cup up and all of a sudden once it overflows, then it may come out, be triggered by a specific incident. So obviously we were very mindful of that and the Commissioner is uh, extremely mindful. Um, we've increased the numbers of our counsellors that belong to the London Fire Brigade now. Uh, we're also working with the Firefighters Charity who uh, have counsellors uh, that can assist our firefighters. Um, there's no shame in coming forward in the London Fire Brigade. Uh, if you've got a mental health issue, uh, we can, you know, we, we're there to support our staff. Um, and I think it's really key that all corporations, you know, big fire services, emergency services, uh, bear that in mind that actually the people are our organisation and we need to make sure that they are mentally fit as well as physically fit. I think we forget to plan for ourselves and our families because we're so used to taking care of our communities and we always tell the message that always starts at home. But I think we forget that. And as disasters have gotten bigger, as we're seeing the interval between events shorten, so we no longer have a defined fire season, it's just whenever it's dry, it's burning. We're seeing floods, and the frequency between events is getting such a high tempo of operation. Uh, I think we got to remember our responders need to be looking at their preparedness, both their physical and their mental preparedness in dealing with this. People who work in, uh fire and emergency services and who are really dedicating their lives for others, uh, a cause bigger than themselves. One of the biggest challenges is we tend to jump right into the collective work, uh, the, the cause bigger than ourselves and moving more towards what I would call is the we orientation. And we sometimes don't step back for that personal reflective growth of I and me in that we journey. And so a lot of the work I think that's important for people who are public servant leaders, particularly people that were here at AFAC, is to really not ignore that personal part of journey in trying to exercise the social part of the journey we're on.